Hi, Tony here, welcome to the channel and you join me today out in the garage installing some auxiliary lights to the Honda Africa Twin. I ride a lot in country lanes, I ride at dusk, I ride at night sometimes and although the LED lights are brighter and the main beams are pretty good, I still feel like I needed some more. So I've been looking around at auxiliary lights and there's one name that seems to stand out above everybody else in terms of the range and the choice that you've got for your particular application. And that name was Denali. So I went and had a look at their website, saw their range, thought this is gonna be the one for me. But being a company based in North America, I decided to try and find somewhere in the UK where I could source those lights. And that's where a bike thing came along. I contacted Steve who took me through the range what you might want to use for what application and if you haven't seen his youtube video then i'd suggest go away and have a look at that i'll put a link up in the top corner and in the description because what this guy doesn't know about this lighting system and the easy can fitment isn't worth knowing so go and check out his videos if you want a comparison of what these lights can do uh, one of the most recent videos he did he went through the entire denali range set up a rig and showed them being used at night at various percentages of power and it really does give you an idea of what they can do and it was from that that i chose the s4 lights to go on the honda and they will eventually transfer across onto my ktm once the honda goes back now i was looking to just add spots to the bike um, because i just wanted something that's going to help with that main beam so i wanted them wired in so that when you flick main beam on instead of getting that long shoot of light that the stock headlight gives you you get a much broader brighter spread of light so i plumped for the s4 which is a still an incredibly bright light but it's relatively compact and i think this will actually look nice on the ktm but they should work well on the africa twin and as i say if you watch steve's video on his channel where he compares all of the different lights the output from this is pretty damn good first thing i'm going to fit is going to be the light bar this is an sw motec unit nice and simple bolts onto where the existing stock horn is you've got a longer bolt in there to be able to bolt that into place and it rests on the frame and then you've just got two holes here to be able to mount your spot lamp so that's the first job on but before we do that let's have a look at exactly what is going onto the bike sound bomb compact Although it doesn't necessarily look that compact, but the noise that this makes for its size, I think is quite impressive. So that will go as well. So that sound bomb, these lights all wire in to the easy can. And this plugs into essentially in line on the bike's wiring with all your various outputs. Uh, and then that allows you to control everything easily. You can set it up with a computer and then you can control it through the bike's controls. And there's an accessory kit which has got more connections, extended cables, depending on where you want to fit it. So it all looks rather complicated, um, but I'll try and go through it and make it simple. A lot of this stuff you won't necessarily need. This is just in the kit, so it depends on where it needs to go as to how long the wires need to be. So I'll go through all of those bits. I've got a mount there as well for the sound bomb, and we'll get to that when we get to that. So that's what's going on the bike. Let's get started. So the bracket's on and I've put these in place loosely. Uh, I don't want to fix them just yet because I'm not quite sure what I'm going to have to do about routing these cables at this point in time. But it's just to give you an idea. That was the easy bit. So now the nitty gritty comes and that involves getting some of the plastics off, getting the tank up to be able to access the port for the easy can. So I'm going to drop this down, move the camera around and get on with that. And now I'm no expert in fitting these and Hex help you out with that with the easy cam because if you look on the box, there's a little QR code here. Scan that with your phone or your tablet and that will bring up a page that shows all of the different bikes. Choose the bike that you've got and then there are very comprehensive installation procedures uh, to take you through the whole lot. First job is to disconnect the battery, which is just removing the cover on this side. If you've got an Africa Twin, 
you know that you need to take the little toolbox cover off. I'm not going to video that because I am literally disconnecting the battery and it will differ from bike to bike. But all the instructions are in here. I'll get on with that. Then it's a case of undoing several bolts in here to be able to lift the tank up. And that's where you can get to the IMU port, which is under here, which is where the easy can has to plug into. Now essentially we want to be able to lift this part of the tank up so the next thing to do is to get these two 5mm allen bolts out, these two up here and undo this bolt here. And these two bolts here as well, there we go and there you can see once this tab is off there are the extra two bolts to undo. And then these bits can be lifted away with a little tab on here to just get them free. Next off is to get these four 8mm bolts out to get this bracket off. This is the tank mount bracket and underneath here is where the IMU plug is. And pop that bit out. And this is probably the fiddliest part because the little bit that you can, might be able to just see under there is the IMU. So once I can get that clip undone and the plug out, the easy can daisy chains in between that which makes this part of the circuit that then gives you the control and then you've got the various leads that go off to whatever accessories you're fitting now getting this little baby off was by far and away the most difficult bit you've got to essentially be able to get your finger in on the side uh, to push this lever so you kind of have to push that lever and then it will pop off now that's unplugged this part of the easy can plugs onto that that plugs into where this came from and the easy can is essentially connected. We've then got to just run the wires down to connect it to the battery for power. So here's a quick tip. This power cable has got to run down, tucked behind the plastic and spit out here to connect to the battery. Trying to feed these wires down through here is a bit of a pain. So what I've done is pushed a little bit of locking wire up through the end, looped it through the two elements and then what I can do when I've got two hands is pull them through from this side and then all I've got to do is tuck this fuse up out of the way so that it's not uh, chafing on anything. That bit's done but whilst I'm here I'm going to fit the sound bomb because that actually mounts into here and that cabling runs up there to run through to the easy can. So whilst I'm here I might as well do that. There's a little bracket that bolts onto I think either these two or these two sound bomb hangs off of that then you just need to plug it in at the bottom but then when you've run that cable up through there you plug that into the easy can the existing horn stays where it is stays wired and it doesn't change so you get this sound bomb and the standard horn when you beep just for a reference with the camera set up in this position this is the standard horn so this is where it's going to fit there's this bracket that mounts onto here and then there's a bolt that goes through there that hooks onto that. So the easiest thing is to mount that onto the back of that and then undo those bolts and bolt those on. But before I do that, in the accessory kit is this cable which has the connectors for the bottom of the horn and obviously the connector for the easy can. So before I actually put something here, I'm gonna try and run this cable up through the back here so that it's up out of the way. It's always worth remembering to label the bolts that are coming out as well. So if you do ever want to go back to stock, which I'll need to do when this bike goes back, I know exactly where those bolts are coming from. I think I'm done in terms of what's here. Battery box cover can go back on and uh, we'll carry on. Now with the second generation Easy Can, you've got four different circuits that you can connect accessories to. You can go in and change what those are, but there is a kind of default for each of the colors so you can't quite see it in here but there's red yellow white and blue wires on the inside of the sheathing the red and white are generally set up for lights the blue is the horn and the yellow is uh, can be anything but will be possibly for the rear lights or other accessories now obviously you can as i said change those in the settings but it makes sense to know that before so in this case where i've run the sound bomb i've just connected that to the blue circuit when i run the cabling through with the extensions for the front spotlights one will go in the red one will go in the white but there is a reason why these two are separate 
on the previous model you would have a kind of a wire lead so you'd connect maybe two spotlights into a wire lead into one channel and they both work as that one single light now that obviously makes sense but what you can do with this is run a light to each of these circuits and then in the software when you name them you can tell them that this is one single circuit but they can operate independently. If, for example, you want the spotlight to go out when you're indicating, so if you're indicating right, your right indicator comes on, you can have the right spotlight go off, but the left spotlight stays on, just to make the indicator a little bit more easy to see. But we'll talk a little bit more about that when we come to look at the setup on the computer. For now, I've got to run the extension leads from the spots up through the bike, connect those in there, get this all tucked away nicely it needs to sit kind of somewhere accessible down here because there's a little port here at the end which is where you'll plug it into your laptop to be able to change all the settings so you really want to make that nice and easy and accessible so once all of the bits and pieces are connected in then I can work out where all this wiring needs to sit. Thankfully on the Honda there's quite a bit of space under here, um, but I'll get that all tucked away so that's nice and neat, and we'll go from there. So obviously now all I need to do is run the wiring from the spots through to the back. Obviously the cable that comes with the spots isn't long enough, so in the accessory box that I showed you before, there is an extension cable. Plug one into there, run it through, connect it all up, and then I can show you what these lights actually look like. This part actually proved to be easier than I thought. The wire for the light zip ties nicely behind the SW Motec bracket. There's a little sheath here which is cut away so that the cable can sit behind it. This then feeds nicely up through the centre here and you can run it along the side of the tank where I had run the previous cable. So nice and neat. This SW Motec mount I think is really good. I've always liked their stuff, really high quality. You can order this through a bike thing and what I'll do is I'll put a bundle together of all the bits that I put on this bike and leave a link in that description so you can go away and have a look at what that is. And if you want to go down this route for your Africa Twin, then you've got an easy bundle just to purchase and away you go. Okay, let's go through these connections on the easy can quickly just one more time. These two cables go off to the battery. The four connectors in the middle are your four accessory connection points. The connector here at the top is what goes into, in the Honda's case, the IMU port, but it will go into your accessory port on your bike. And then the big connector at the bottom is what you plug into the bit that you unplugged from that accessory or IMU port. On the end of the Easy Can is a micro USB port, but the kit does come with a connection cable. All you do is plug into that, into your laptop, download the Hex Easy Can software, and then you can start setting up the accessories that you've got in there, which is really, really simple. Once you open up the software, you'll see the four circuits corresponding to the cables that are from the Easy Can, and this is where you can tell the software exactly what it is you've got connected to that. So in this case, for the blue one, this is where I connected the horn. The red circuit is and my, uh, I'll put that as my auxiliary one right, and the white circuit I'll put as my auxiliary one left. So that means those two circuits can run together, but act independently. Once you've allocated those circuits, you can then just go and change the settings with these simple sliders. So for dipped headlights, you can change the intensity that they run at during the day and during the night. You can obviously do the same for the main beam. And as you scroll down the page, this is where you get to change some of the other bits that you might have connected. So here is the auxiliary brake light, which I don't have. And if you fitted a sound bomb, then you just click the slider to enable that. As you can see, you've then got simple toggles to switch on and off how these lights work. So if you want the main beam off when the lights are active, if you want the light to strobe with the horn, if you want the flash to pass, all those bits, you just click the slider on and off. And there's also a handy little diagnostic tool by clicking the symbol at the top. You can look at each circuit, see what peak amperage it will take with the accessories you've got connected. You can test each of those circuits below that. And then there's just a little bit of system uh, details on the bottom there. So quite comprehensive. 
these are the settings that I initially went with. So let's actually have a look and see how they work now they're all wired in. Okay, so all the wiring is tucked away neatly under the seat. I'll neaten up a little bit more later on. Um, but everything's all back together again. So if I turn the ignition on, these will come on at 20%, which is what we set. If I flash the lights, you get the full 100%. If I flash that three times for the passing mode, then we get the strobe effect, which is pretty cool. If I'm indicating, you can see that the light on the side that is indicating goes off, just to try to make things a little bit clearer. And the last thing to hear is the horn. I'll play you the quick clip that we did earlier on of the standard horn. And now with the sound bomb compact, and I've also told these to flash when you build the horn as well. So let's see if it does make any difference. Jesus Christ. Yep, that makes a difference. I don't think anybody is going to be able to say that they didn't hear me. But straight away, just as I turn around here, just having that 20% fog light makes a big difference. Let's see what happens when we put main beam on. Boom! Jesus. Daylight. Wow, this is so much better. And you've got to realize that these are the S4s. So yeah, if you go with D4s or D7s, they're gonna be brighter with a longer throw as well. But these S4s are brilliant. And I don't think really I'm gonna need any more than this. It's such a nice wide beam and it throws it far enough down the road to be useful. Look at that. That's incredible. So, good things do come in small packages. Actually, what I can't resist doing is trying out the strobe. Let's give that a go. Oh, disco. <laughs> and a bit of horn for good measure. But there's enough light in the corner as well that it almost acts like a cornering light. As you can tell, I am very impressed. I think that novelty is going to wear off, but it's quite good fun. But even without the main beam, it's still much. That's almost as good as the uh, the standard Africa Twin main beam. So if you're looking at adding to some lights, I know they cost them more money, but really just look at the performance of these Denali's absolutely amazing and as I indicate yeah I'm losing that one on the right as I'm indicating right and if I indicate left I'm losing the one on the left as well Not that it's difficult to see those driving lights, but uh, I'll find somewhere to stop and take your picture as well, because I think it's going to look quite imposing from the front without being over the top. I didn't want to light it up like a Christmas tree and put tons of lights on there. So just having the two S4s along with the standard headlight and the amber daytime running lights that uh, this bike is fitted with. That's enough. I'm hoping that you can pick this up on the GoPro or at least see the contrast between the two. And that's with the 20%. Oh, there's a, an owl. I wonder what other wildlife we're going to come across. Thankfully, there's nothing out here that can eat me. I'm just going to find somewhere to Actually, here's somewhere for me to pull over. So these are the two S4s at 20% and then at 100%. So that's it, a really neat install. And I have to say, I'm really surprised at how easy it was to do. Wiring can be complex. Certainly when you want to wire something into the controls like this can be really difficult. And it just goes to show you how easy that hex, easy can does make things.
Actually, the trickiest part of the installation is just running the wires down and making room to get those from the front to the back. But as I showed you earlier, if you scan the QR code on the box, then you do get the installation instructions. They are very clear. They are very easy to follow. That's what I used to do this, and it went really easily. It took me uh, kind of a, almost a day, I guess, to do that, but that's taking into account that I've got to film as well, set up the camera, move stuff around. Um, so if you were just sitting down to do this installation, then a half a day should give you plenty of time to get that in. The real test, obviously, was to get it out on the road, and you can see the difference that that makes. A massive thank you has to go to Steve at the Bike Thing for all of his expertise and giving me an idea of what would work and what wouldn't work on the Africa Twin. But I think the lights look really nice on this bike. Not too big, not too in your face, but they certainly make a difference out on the road. The SW Motec light bar I think is also very good. If you've got an Africa Twin that hasn't got crash bars, that's definitely the way to go. If you are using the OEM or any other aftermarket crash bars, I would still recommend doing this. I think it's very neat. It keeps the headlights inboard of the bars and it's uh, they're in a, exactly the right position. So really pleased with that. As I say, you can order all of this through uh, Steve's website, a bike thing, and I'll leave links in the description down below. If you've got any questions, then let me know in the comments section and I'll try to answer those for you. And all that leaves me to say is until next time, thanks for watching, take care, ride safe, and I'll see you soon. Bye.